うんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんう While you're here, you might as well think about subscribing to the Trident Network if you haven't already. It's only five freaking dollars, dude. But I'll tell you a little secret. If you have Amazon Prime, which I know most of you do because we are all slaves of Jeff Bezos, it is free. All you have to do is hit subscribe and log in. I literally did it just before the show started. Once I remembered my password and you were in there, you will subscribe to the Trident Network for free. And there are perks. You get our emotes, which is Of course, the party dolphin, the official mascot of the Trident Network. If you don't know about a party dolphin, then obviously you're a loser because it's a party dolphin. What else do you really need to know? And then you also get channel points, which we, you will be able to use during this game because the audience does have control in some parts of this wacky, crazy, cooked up game that I've made in my crazy little brain here that I will subject my three very, very lucky friends to who we are going to meet. Right now, friends, say hello to the internet. <laughs> there you go. It's easy. Easy. Yeah, yeah. We're all here now in our little bubbles, just hanging out, about to have a real good time. I'm going to give you all the chance just to say, hey, introduce yourself, anything you want to say. I'm going to start over here. Closest bubble to me. That's going to be up top. Ryan, Ryan, my friend, how are you? Justin, I'm great, man. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to do so many things that I have no idea what we're about to do. So this can be fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, full disclosure, I have not told any of the contestants today really what they're getting into. Um, but I would say if there is anyone who have maybe has a slight advantage in today's game, and I may be jinxing them by saying that, it would be the person next to Ryan, just over to the right, Tori, here in our middle circle. Tori, I would I say this because You kind of were there at the origin of these stupid games from the Night That Late Show. So you're you're a little more accustomed to how this could work. How are you feeling about possibly winning? Well, Justin, I don't know if you remember as as accustomed as I was at the beginning of the Not That Late Show, I did I did get most of the answers that I tried wrong. So uh your optimism is as well as well meeting as it is. We'll we'll see how that goes. But um <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm bad at trivia, but highly competitive. So here we go. Perfect mix. It's honestly the perfect mix for this game. And then all the way over far furthest right bubble, Black Santa Claus himself, Jared Chapman. How the hell are you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. And you know what? I'm glad that you're down for this ride. This may be your show that you're hosting, but I'm going to take you on a ride. <laughs> honestly that is why i wanted you on because i knew even though you guys have no idea what's about to happen i also don't know what you guys are capable of in this medium um so i am very scared actually uh so we might as well get right into the first round this round each question you'll have five is worth one point there'll be multiple choice answers now this game that we're putting together here It's very special because there are stupid games and there are also stupid prizes, which, how could I forget? Of course, today's sponsor for Stupid Games, Stupid Prizes is none other than Dollar Value Plus. That's right, Dollar Value Plus, 6714 North Clark Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60626. They're still open for another hour, so I'm sorry. You're going to have to stay here, watch this game, and go tomorrow and check out some of the cool, cool stuff they have. I'm going to reveal the first prize now. It is this beautiful porcelain Good Morning Beautiful mug. The winner will get this and some other prizes. There will be more. You're not just winning a mug or else it would be stupid game, stupid prize. And it's plural. So let's get right into it. The first category is one of my favorite things to think about all the time. Where are we finna eat at? What I am going to give y'all, 
I'm going to name an item from a popular chain restaurant. I'm going to give you three restaurant options that it could possibly be from. I just need you to give me the correct answer of where this actually exists. Where does this menu act item actually belong? Which, which restaurant? Okay. So pretend you have just sat down at this fantasy restaurant we are at. I come over as your server. We're going to get things started as normally we would with a drink. I need you to think about and tell me where in the hell can you get an 1800 Bloody Maria that is a Bloody Mary with 1800 tequila? Can you get it at Chili's? Can you get it at Old Country Buffet? Or can you get it at Applebee's? Ryan, since you were the closest bubble to me, out of those three, where the hell can you get an 1800 Bloody Maria? I'm going to say Chili's. All right. All right. Fair enough. Tori? I'm going to also say Chili's. Jared, my friend, two people have already said Chili's. Are you going to go against the grain? Or are you going to agree with them that an 1800 Bloody Maria is available at Chili's? Like this is a trick question because your options were Chili's, Old Country mm -hmm. Buffet, mm -hmm. and Apple Beans. Yeah. Now, people don't go to Apple Beans to eat. They go to no, the lake. That is true. And... I don't feel like Applebee's got it like that. And Chili's, it's the Southwest. Tex Mex. Mm -hmm. But then what's the wild card? Mm. The wild card is Old Country Buffet. Okay. And I'm going to say Old Country Buffet. Wow. Old Country. Okay. Going against the grain. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, <laughs> it did not pay off at this time. You can get an 1800 Bloody Maria from Chili's. From Chili's, of course you can get it at Chili's. You can get that shit to go. Hey, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm Jared walking through wrong. that. Jared it's all right. It's all right. We got four room. more of these in this round. You can come back quick. <laughs> it's no problem. It's all right. You're only down one. It's not that big of a deal. All right, you got your drink. You got your 1800 Bloody Maria right there. Now it's time to move over to the appetizers. You know, you're scrolling through this mysterious menu and you stop and you see a sweet corn tamale cake. Tell me, can you get this from TGI Fridays, the Cheesecake Factory, or PF Chang's? Jared, since you're down one, I'm going to go to you first, my man. Which one do you think you can get this from? Corn tamale from TGF Fridays, PF Chains, and what was the other option? The Cheesecake Factory. Mm, the Drake Restaurant. Mm -hmm, um, the one and only. Yep. You know what? All of these have very vast menus. Cheesecake having the largest. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Cheesecake, you can go get spaghetti, and then you could go get like quesadillas. Both tomato based, but Italian versus like, you know. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna say cheesecake. <laughs> All right. All right. Lock it in. Jared's in with Cheesecake Factory. Tori, what say you? Where can you get a sweet corn tamale cake? I, I I'm gonna process of elimination this and say that it's PF Chang's it just doesn't feel I, I know that as inauthentic as they are it does feel like a tamale would be a real left swing here um for them mm -hmm. uh I I I really I I hear what Jared's saying as far as si menu size I think is an incredible yeah. uh point to, to be taken here in this in this question but when you name a restaurant thank god it's Friday I think at that point, you're kind of just leaving shit wide open. You get to just make up food at that point. You named your restaurant after a phrase. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to go with TGI Fridays. Okay. All right. Ryan, you're Good last point. up. It's So far, it's been split. We got to vote for TGI Fridays. We got to vote for Cheesecake Factory. Are you going to shake things up and go for PF Chang's? Or are you going somewhere different, man? 
Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll go PF Chang's. Let's just let's just make this. You know, somebody. Oh, someone wins. Somebody's. Oh gonna my win. God! Pure <laughs> chaos. Second second question in. Pure <laughs> chaos. Uh, guys, you can get a sweet corn tamale cake from none other than the Drake Restaurant Cheesecake Factory. Oh. Jared, you're on the board, my man. Damn! <laughs> wow. The menu's big. I'm telling it's a big ass menu. It <laughs> truly God. is a big ass. Too many big, faces. Bam. Big ass menu. Yeah. I'm sure the CEO of Cheesecake Factory is watching right now. Yo, shrink the menu <laughs> in half, man. You're doing too much, bro. You're doing too much. And while while you're doing it for the menu, do it for the portions too. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that is also true. Mm-hmm. That is too much food. I can't believe I'm saying it, but too much food. Okay. So you have your drink, you have your app. You know what? Let's just let's hypothesize. You happen to have a child with you here at the table. We're going to get them out the way first. Where on God's green can you order from a chain restaurant and receive a corn dog, Applebee's, TGI Fridays, or the Cheesecake Factory? Brian took a big swing there and missed. I'm going to let you go first this time, man. Where, where in the hell do you think you can get a corn dog on a kid's meal? I mean, to defend myself, I think you gotta, you gotta try it out. You know, every, every now and then you just gotta, just gotta take a swing at it. So yeah, it, it didn't pay off, but you know, sometimes that happens. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Applebee's for this one. Okay. All right. Jared, you seem to be very deep in thought. What are you thinking? Honestly, have kids gone to Applebee's? <laughs> I went to an Applebee's once, believe it or not, when I was a child. <laughs> it was just like, I don't think I've ever seen, like, it, it's not like a kid-friendly place. It's like saying Typically, Lover's Lane, no. like, we got some gummies and kids can eat them. It's like, hell not. Nah. <laughs> um, what was it? What was it? <laughs> My bad. You need the options, options again? Yeah, what was the option again? It was just like, <laughs> just Applebee's. <laughs> Have kids at all. <laughs> It is the Cheesecake Factory, Applebee's, TGI Fridays. One of these restaurants serves a corn dog on their kids' menu. Which one do you think? So, using Tori's argument, saying that they are labeled, thank God it's Friday. Okay. Um, that's just some wild shit. Um, so, I'm going to go with TGI Fridays. Okay. Okay. Going with Fridays. Sorry, Jared, use your logic. Are you also going to use your logic on this question? No, I'm not because I am inconsistent. Uh, (laughs) I love an inconsistent queen. So, yes, I do. I Applebee's, I would also say not for kids, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, what do you do at Applebee's? Drink. What do you want when you're drunk? Shitty kids food. Mm. right you don't want anything yeah, fancy yeah. you're like i want a hot dog wrapped in bread okay the you know god's god's uh god's dish and <laughs> folks that's why i'm gonna go with applebee's all right we got two votes for applebee's and one for tgi fridays guys you can get a corn dog at applebee's yeah you can yeah you can <laughs> I mean, that just is I, do, I do not go to Applebee's at all. <laughs> When's the last time all of you have been to Applebee's? I honestly think the last time I was at an Applebee's was when I was a child. Wow, <laughs> irresponsible parents. <laughs> <laughs> they were just exposing it. him to the real world. There you go. <laughs> all right, so it's time now for the entrees. Guys, I'm going to give you three restaurants and one item that doesn't fit any of these three, but I need to t- I need you to tell me which of these restaurants serves a Nashville hot chicken sandwich. Is it Red Lobster, The Olive Garden, or Romano's Macaroni Grill? Tori, you do not eat meat, so I shall start with you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, can I get the first option again? The first option was Red Lobster. The second was the Olive Garden. The third was Romano's Macaroni Grill. So this puts us in an 
in an interesting predicament because mm-hmm. each one of the names of these restaurants explicitly say a food item that they may or may not serve. That's what I was, yeah. See, see what right? I did there? We got lobsters, olives, <laughs> <laughs> and macaroni. If there's anything the Olive Garden is known for, it's the goddamn olives. They got Kalamata, baby. They got blue cheese. You name them. Pitted, no pits. It's there. <laughs> Ma- uh, see, Red Lobster, though, mm-hmm. I, when you get into chain seafood restaurants, okay. you do open up kind of a whole new world. Sure, sure. I'm going to go with Red Lobster. Ooh, okay. Jared. Yeah. Olive Garden, Red Lobster, Romano's Mac and Macaroni Grill. Which one of these serves a Nashville hot chicken sandwich? Mm. Tori, you don't eat fish? Well, I do eat shellfish. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with this at okay. all. I was just curious. <laughs> no, we're just we're just learning about each other. <laughs> just, just some getting to know you questions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it makes no difference whatsoever. Oh, um, God. Let's see, Olive Garden, uh, mm-hmm. Romano's, and yep. Red Lobster. Yes. Sir. You know what's crazy about the pandemic is like, I don't even remember eating at these damn places. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I think I have, I don't think I've ever actually eaten at Olive Garden. I'm racking my brain trying to think of a time. I just don't come from a pasta family. It's not what we do. An olive family, Justin? Yeah, my family's not an olive family. Also, happy birthday, mom. A garden. Oh, happy birthday, uh, Miss Winton. Happy birthday. (laughs) My mom's birthday was yesterday. She doesn't know how the internet works. She's not going to see this, but I figure I should put it out (laughs) in the universe. Mm. Um, I'm gonna say just because I like the comedian Romano's. <laughs> I love that that's your reasoning, and I have to move on now to Ryan. Ryan, Nashville hot chicken sandwich. Where the hell is it coming from? All right, so this is this one's pretty tough for me uh, because. I actually worked at Red Lobster in high school. Um, oh! So since we're getting to know each other, figure I'd drop some of that knowledge. On we got to talk too. about that I, later. <laughs> I worked as a host my senior year of high school at Red Lobster. So they do have many items on the menu that do not belong there. Uh, and like... <laughs> you know what I... I gotta say, chaos. I'm going. Uh, I'm going Olive Garden. Chaos. Just, just, we're doing it. Whoa! All right. mm, 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 mm. We need to find Ryan's manager, at Red Lobster, because they sure do serve a goddamn nasty ah, hot chicken sandwich <laughs> at Red Lobster. I would never but, order it, but they have it there if you want that. I will say. It was not on the menu when I worked there. That's a new thing. <laughs> I will say the demand has gone up for Nashville hot chicken sandwiches over the years. All right, guys, we've got we've had the entrees, we've had drinks, we've had apps. It's time for dessert. Please tell me where you would find a chocolate fondue flight. Would you get it from Bob Evans, Outback Steakhouse, or Longhorn Steakhouse? Ryan, you blew it pretty bad on the last one. I'm going to give you a chance to redeem yourself right now. Yeah, by having me guess out of all these places I've never been to. Two. All right, cool. Uh, let's do you, uh, you know what? Bob Evans sounds like the type of place that would have some, some nonsense like that. Let's go. Let's go with that one. All right. All right. Tori, you seem hella puzzled. What's going on? Yeah, I I... Bob Evans is breakfast food. Typically. Typically. Now. I did not know that before Tori just said that. So that's that's all right. It's, I think it's an East Coast thing, right? Typically. Yeah. Yeah. Atlanta. yeah. yeah. Um, so 
Bob Evans would be a little bit of a left swing for me, but I will mm-hmm. say those types of restaurants have a real hard time staying in their lane these days because sure. capitalism. Yeah, you know, gets us all. Now, I've not heard of Longhorn Steakhouse. And, oh. you know, the thing about the term steakhouse is um, things, people like to throw that around. You know, you have nice steakhouses in downtown Chicago, and then you have other houses that have steaks. And <laughs> Outback Steakhouse, never forget, that's where the bloom and Onion comes from. Yeah. Yep. No, so they rules. came out. Yeah. No rules over there at Outback. We're in the Outback baby. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna have to go with Outback Steakhouse because that seems just a right amount of like who asked for that kind of food, <laughs> which Outback Steakhouse can, can deliver. We know. So, okay. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. Jared, I'm coming to you last with a chance to tie for second place coming out around one. Where in the hell can you get a chocolate fondue flight? Uh, what was it? What absent again? Outback, it, Longhorn, Outback Steakhouse, Longhorn and Steakhouse, Evans. and Bob Evans. Mm. Yeah, I didn't even know about Bob Evans. I, I was like, I've never even ate at Bob Evans before. I've been there once. It's I. And I don't even remember. I don't. Yeah, I've never ate at Longhorn, and I ate at like Outback like twenty years ago, probably. Man, I've never been to an Outback either. I really, I'm kind of mad about that more than anything. I mean, this show is just making me realize I don't go out. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Listen, man, when the show's over, we'll go out. There's a, there's a, there's a Longhorn out in, uh, out, out west in Skokie. Yeah, it's Skokie. We can just hit that oh, okay. up. Okay, okay. We'll all okay. go. Cool. Cool. We'll find something well, for you in there, Tori. I'm sure. Yeah, cool. yeah, I'll go. Well, sure. since this one is Skokie, I'm going to say Longhorn. Ooh, you should have went Outback, my boy. I knew it. You can get a chocolate fondue <laughs> flight from Outback Steakhouse. That makes sense. Jesus. What a round one. <laughs> what a round, a dominant round one for Tori, I got to say. Thank you so much. Thanks I'm a so little, much. I'm a little surprised, but hey. Because I don't eat any of those foods. Me too. <laughs> we know you love olives. <laughs> That much we do, I do know. Fuck with olives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at the end of round one, Tori has four, Ryan has two, Jared has one, and I have another prize to reveal from this week's prize bag. Now, this is very important for anybody just on the go, anywhere at all, who needs just something to jot down. We got a little big book. It's ruled, baby. Wide ruled. You can whip these pages out. It's nice. It's good. I got one of these myself. Superior quality writing pads, it says on here. Just something to remember as we continue on in this game. Uh, Now then, we are in our first break in between rounds, but it is time for the first redemption attempt here. Yes, 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 yes. So what happens now is the player in second place, which is Ryan, you get the chance, sir to redeem yourself. I'm gonna give you a bonus opportunity. Thank you. I'm gonna give you the opportunity now. Um, Actually, while I do that, I also need to make sure that we got some folks in the chat because it will rely on them because whether you receive these bonus two points inside this game or not, relies on them. Ryan, my friend, your challenge is, please tell me why. Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback you've ever seen. You have 30 seconds, my friend. Starting right now. All right. Uh, well, if you if you watch the news in the past couple of days, you've basically seen him taunt the entire Chicago Bears fan base by saying, I own you, I own you, which is sad to see as a fan, but also one of the greatest pieces of trash talking that I have ever seen in my entire life. So based purely on him saying that he owns Chicago bears fans and the team. Yeah. I, I got to give it to him. He, he does. And I, I hate myself for that, but he does. Honestly, I just wanted to see if you were man enough to admit it as a bears fan. That was really the whole challenge. That was really the whole thing. So did I Um, Well, let's check with the judges. (laughs) Judges, how much time do we have left on that poll? 
there is about 10 seconds left on that poll, but it's mm, looking well, like someone got three votes ooh. for, yes, he yeah. did yeah. redeem himself. All right. Well, Thank we'll you, put it on the board. The Brian, it. you will get two points, my friend, and this game is now tied. Jared, don't worry. Do not worry, my friend, because in this next round, the point totals are a little bit different. You can score quick points very fast. You can get as much as three points for each question in this next round. And of course, this round is round two, what we call, how much we talking? If you all know me and you know that it's been a very long pandemic for me, I have somehow, some way fallen into sneaker culture real bad. Your boys got fiending real bad, buying way too many damn shoes. It's bad. I got a bad, bad. They should have never doubled my goddamn credit limit. It's a, it's a problem. It's a real issue. But what I'm going to need for you all to do, we're going to play a little Price is Right style game. I'm going to give you guys, and you'll look up on your screen here, and you'll see um, some, very, some very special shoes come across the screen. And what I will do is I'll give you the retail price of that shoe. What you need to do is give me the average sale price that shoe goes for on StockX.com, the number one retail reselling site online that is StockX. Thank you so much for your sponsorship in advance, StockX.com. Jared, you seem to be down bad. What's up? Because, because like, okay, you were talking about sneakers, right? Yep, 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 yep. Let's say like Jordan. Let's say if you want to get a Jordan either 12 or Retro 12 or Retro 13. Mm -hmm, sure, yeah. It's usually is 190. Mm -hmm. uh, on stock eggs, that's yep. like 600. Yeah, capitalism is <laughs> wild, ain't it? <laughs> capitalism sucks. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you're you're right. That's literally what the game is going to be. Now, we are going to play this Price is Right style. I need you to give me a price. The closest to that price will receive three points. The second, further, the furthest away from that will get one. The person who's caught in the middle will get two points. Got it? All right, let's start with the first shoe. A shoe I actually own myself, but I'm afraid to wear. These are the Nike 6 Protos from the year 20. It is a 10-year anniversary edition of the shoes Kobe Bryant wore on Christmas Day way back in 2011. Guys, the retail price for these pair of shoes was $190. Remember, they came out just last year. With that taken into account, what is the average sale price for them currently on StockX.com? Ryan, I'm going to come to you first. I'm going to go $545. Ooh, okay. Good number. Good number. Sorry, what do you got? Ooh. Ah, I'm going to highball it a little bit. I'm going to say mm. $875. Ooh, okay. All right, well, you know, Kobe is no longer with us, so who knows? Uh, Jared, what are you thinking? I think, Tori, that was a good uh thing to do mm -hmm. uh <laughs> because yeah kobe's no longer with us also people are going like wild over lime colored shoes billy Eilish shoes of the jordans which was like a monochrome lime sold out very quickly mm -hmm. um and i wanted those <laughs> i couldn't get them either i couldn't get them either right i, I, I can really see wanted that <laughs> um but i'm going to go in between uh i'm going to say 650 all right. Well, uh, the bad news is you all went over, but the good news is the closest was actually Tory. The average sale price currently is four hundred thirty-five dollars. Not bad. Not bad, actually. If you're thinking Ryan resale. closer, was it Ryan closer? Where yeah, are you? I said, said five forty-five. Ah, yes. Never mind. Sorry, Tory. Should have should have kept the lie going. <laughs> Thanks, Tori. Appreciate it. Give you a chance and you blew it. I'm, so I'm Ryan, will receive, Ryan will receive three points. Jared will get two. Tori, you just get one on that one. Lie next time. Okay. I think that's the lesson Heard. we will learn. <laughs> As we move on to our next shoe, staying in the year 2020, we have a pair of Air Jordan 1 Dior's that retail 
for $2,000. Friends, tell me what is the average sale price for these goddamn shoes? Uh, Ryan, since you did, I'm the closest. It's on you, my friend. How much you think these go for right now? All right. So if the last one was about, I'm, I'm doing some, some math in my head that's probably incorrect. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go $3,700. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, real quick too, I just noticed on the, it's fine then, I ain't tripping. Well then, Jared, since you got in the middle in the next one, Ryan's talking, what did you say, $3,000? Uh, I said 3,400, I believe. 3,400. Jared, what, what I said do you think? 3,700. I, I can't remember. I'll give you 3,700 3, because okay. why not? I said Jared, what do you think? <laughs> oh, knowing how like sneakerheads buy shoes mm -hmm. and it's kind of like how people buy watches. And mm. because of the name Christian Dior, it's very weird how Jordans themselves sell out because like uh, the movie Space Jam was made to promote Jordans. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, it turned into whatever it is. Now, uh, I'm going to say 10,000. Ooh, all right. I mean, hey, not out of the realm of possibility. Sorry, what you thinking? Oof, I wanna kind of split the difference here, but I don't know which way to cut it. Mm, it's a big difference. Yes. I, I do hear- <laughs> I like, hear, that's a, a pretty big gap. <laughs> right. I think it is a good point that Jared was saying about how sneakerheads, you know, it's like, it's for them, it's it's their collector's item, right? It's like, you know, it's, it's part of their identity, you know? Mm -hmm. So they'll pay big money and you've got, You've got the Dior element. You got the Jordans element. Mm -hmm. It's a lot going on. It is that it is. I'm gonna go seventy two hundred dollars. Mm. The average sale price currently on StockX.com for a pair of Air Jordan One Dior's is eight thousand three hundred and four dollars. Wow. wow, that's three points for Tori. Boom. Man, that is, that's nuts. I Sorry, got very you lucky. You did go over, so you're going to have to just get one point on that. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sound so defeated. We still got three more pieces left. Oh, no, Jared. <laughs> oh, I told you, God. you won't go on a ride. I'm going to take you, you won't a ride. <laughs> <laughs> no matter well, what. <laughs> speaking, speaking of rides, one of the most comfortable shoes apparently they're taking a ride in today is a pair of Adidas Yeezy Foam Runners. These shoes, which essentially, let's call a spade a spade, they're, they're just Yeezy Crocs, retail for $75. <sighs> I need to know, what is the average sale price for a pair of Yeezy foam runners. Jared, I'm gonna give you the first crack at this, man. 350. 350? All right. Tori, you love Kanye. How much do other people buy in Kanye shoes? Yeah, let's really uh, talk about how much I love Kanye on uh, several public <laughs> platforms. Um, love that for me. Um, <laughs> 75, 75 retail. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 175. 175. All right. Yeah. Jared says 350. Tori says 175. Ryan, what do you got? I'm gonna give a wild guess here. Mm -hmm. And that these two went over, I'm gonna say $75. <laughs> 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 that in the old dollar strategy, hey. it will not pay off for you. Nah. The average sale price is $608. Oh my. What gosh. the fuck? Jared, you got three points there, my man. And you're right back in this thing. <laughs> Sorry, you get done. two. Ryan, you just get one added on. 
It's yeah, I don't I don't understand. They're apparently very comfortable, but like good lord, six hundred and for I think some Kanye West, like he does a good job at not creating supply, but at creating a high demand. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. So he's an evil he, genius when it comes yeah. to that. Mm-hmm. Moving right along, we have two more left. The next pair we have here is a pair of New Balance Trail Runners made by designer. Oh, I don't laugh. I actually kind of like these. Sorry. These are kind of hot. I don't know. Sorry. Maybe I'm weird. I, I don't care. These retail for $250. Friends, I need to know what is the average sale price on stock X. Tori, since you wanted to laugh and hee hee, you will go first. Yeah. Uh, what would a dad pay for this iteration of New Balance shoes? <laughs> rude very rude uh, can you repeat the retail for me $250 American I'll go uh, 360 all right all right all right Ryan what do you think Justin who did you say this was like a collab with who was this uh, it was a collab with Good Lord, why do you want to make me do things and remember them now? <laughs> Salehi Rembry, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. Of course. <laughs> um, that helped you so much, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of started to say it, and then I don't know that I heard it, and I was like, hey, maybe I'll actually know who we're kind of talking about. But no, so <laughs> we're going to go, we're going to go 750. 750. Nice, solid, round number. Jared, you're up last, my friend. These retail for 250. What are you thinking? It's confusing because I don't know New Balance had like designer stuff like that because I'm more thinking like how Tori was, which is like, what's dad is going to pay for that? But I They're trying to get back in. Yeah. Uh, like I had some rainbow shoes uh, from New Balance and it was like, I was like, damn, he's nice. But people don't buy rainbow shoes. Um, Especially from New Balance, which is a surprise <laughs> that they make up. <laughs> They're trying. God bless them. They're trying. They're trying. Um, but I'm going to say uh, 100% increase and go for 500. Ooh. Oh, wow. All right. Wow. That's the highest amount out of the three of you guessed. Am I right? Oh, yeah. That's why Ryan did it. 750. Well, Ryan, guess what? You get three points because the average sale price. Hold on to your butts is $1,698. <laughs> average sale price? You mean on yep. average people are paying, buying that? Well, that who means is the there's... collabing with? <laughs> <laughs> who is he collabing with? People with gotta, money, I suppose. Because I got to Google who this person is. Because I'll send you his name and info later. Okay. I'll bet anyone. <laughs> I'll bet any one money he's a dad <laughs> we have one anyone we have one more pair of shoes in this round and speaking of dads i feel like any dad born between the years of 1970 to 1990 would want a pair of nike air mags featured from back to the future too these are an actual pair that nike made way back in 2012 Guys, these retailed, there were only 500 made. They retailed for $1,000. I will give you all a slight hint. These shoes are very, very fucking expensive. Think five digits. That being said, Jared, you're in last place. How much do you think is the average sale price of these goddamn shoes? I'm going to say... Cause like, <laughs> this is me going on a tangent. Uh, I looked up like forerunners because in uh, Back to the Future he also had a forerunner, mm-hmm. and the average forerunner is like forty of that model with like black the way that Marty McFly had it. I think it's like forty thousand dollars. Oh no, okay. it's like sixty thousand. 
but you can buy the truck brand new in mint condition, not in brand new, but in mint condition for thirty thousand. Um, so being ridiculous as it is, I'm going to sure. go with the price of what the truck is. And I'm going to say twenty five, twenty five thousand, twenty five thousand dollars. All right, mm-hmm. solid guess to get us started. Tori, you were in second place. What are you thinking? I have some clarifying questions. I may not answer all of them, but That's, go for it. I, I think there are things you've already said, but the, there were five hundred made. Yes. And so, these are now. They haven't been made. Since, for no. decades now. Okay. Yep. All right. They well, retailed, right. They retailed $1, for $1,000 at that time. That is correct. I'm going to say $42,000. $42,000. All right. That's high. Ryan, you're up last. You're in first. You can pad that lead going into the final round. What are you thinking? Yeah, I got some clarifying questions as well. So Jesus so saves Christ. Uh, yeah, you know, so Justin, you were saying that there was some, uh, when it was coming out and then Tori was doing her math on there. Uh, what was the exact year that these were released? These particular pair yes. came out in a limited stock in the year 2012. Okay, okay, okay. You've also mentioned in the past, based on conversations that we've had <laughs> together, that uh, I believe PJ Tucker has this. Uh, shoe correct that is correct he does own a pair okay i'm gonna go uh because you said five digits i'm gonna say ten thousand dollars exactly ten thousand dollars exactly okay ryan you may have needed an extra clarifying question because the average sale price is forty nine thousand one hundred and fifty dollars meaning Tori will get three points jared will get two ryan will get one that is the end of the second round. And good Lord, these scores are about to get nuts. While we wait for that math to be cleared, it's just about time for an audience giveaway. I promised it, and now we're going to do it. Now then, as I have stated earlier in the show, all of tonight's prizes are from that our contestants will win are from dollar value at 6714 North Clark Street, Chicago, Illinois, 6066. I need someone in the chat, if they can give me the exact price I paid for tonight's prizes, I'll keep track of this. Whoever gets as close, the closest amount, they will receive this DVD collection from my own house. It's spooky season, so you will get Disturbia on Blu-ray. You'll get Final Destination 3 on DVD. You'll get Saw 3 on Blu-ray. You'll get the first season of The Walking Dead on Blu-ray. And you'll get Saw 2 on DVD. Jared's losing it. This is a bargain. (laughs) This is a a giveaway right here. This is a deal. (laughs) So go ahead and drop in the chat how much you think I paid on the prizes the contestants will win from dollar (laughs) value. While that is happening, we are going into the final round. Ryan and Tori are tied at 14. Jared, you were in last, but my man... That's a beautiful spot to be in right now because it is now time for your possible redemption. What's going to happen is I'll give you 30 seconds and a topic. If the audience in the chat thinks you are worthy of your redemption points, you will take two points from Ryan and you will take two points from Tori. Jared, are you ready? Yeah. (laughs) Jared, you got 30 seconds, man. You just came back from Florida. Just tell us about your trip. Oh, what did I do in Florida? Um, it was cool. Uh, we stayed in Miami Beach when we got oh. there at night. Um, we were real tired. Uh, mm-hmm. We got a rental car. I love getting a rental car, but we didn't do a photo shoot with it this time. It was a brand new Toyota Corolla. Um, and then it kind of sucked because we uh, people were awake at like five o'clock and we were by the elevator. So people would uh, say stuff. And it was very funny, like at four o'clock, somebody was like, hey, can you shut the fuck up? And then the people like they were quiet and then they get, they came back out and then they were like, oh no, nah, hell no, nah, we ain't gonna be quiet for shit. And it's like, what? <laughs> and then the next, <laughs> then the next day, uh, what did we do? Uh, is this 30 seconds? Cause I know I can go. 
Uh, you know what? Give us one more part of the day here. Okay. Yeah. Then the next day, uh, I just hung out with Jimmy and his girlfriend, Eliana. Uh, she's real cool because I was saying a whole bunch of shit in Spanish. It was like, and she was real sweet about it. And, and I know I said it wrong. Uh, and then we, we went, <laughs> we went to the beach and then, uh, drank. And then we mm-hmm. went to Cuba and then I got like a little Cuban shirt and I wore my Jordans too. So hey. I felt real cool. And then we walked around this area in Miami called Wynwood and smoked a cigar. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that's about <laughs> enough time. <laughs> now, <laughs> Jared, congrats. You have been redeemed, my friend. That means Ryan has 12, Tori has 12, you have 15 going into the final round. How fitting you tell us about your tales in Florida as the final round will be the game, What Happens in Florida? Oh, my God. Here is how this game is going to work. Oh, my God, indeed. What I'm going to give you guys is a news article headline. You need to tell me whether it happened in Florida or not. Simple. Yes or no. 50-50 chance at getting these right. But before we get exactly into that, we need to figure out the scoring for this last round. It's a little fun. As I said, Tori and Ryan, you both have 12. Jared, you have 15. In this final round, much like Jeopardy, you can gamble as many points as you think out of these five questions you will get right. If you think you'll get one, if you think you'll get three, if you think you'll get five. You can gamble all of your points on how many you think you will get. Am I making sense? Because it sounds a little crazy in my head just now. Makes sense. Well, perfect. Well, then, Ryan, I will start with you. How, we'll start with how many points would you like to gamble in this final round? Uh, we're going to gamble nine. You're going to gamble nine points. How many answers do you think you're going to get right? I think I'm going to get three right. Okay. All right. You think you're going to get three right. Bear with me while I make a mental note because my brain ain't great. So nine points for Ryan, and then he's going to get three correct. Perfect. Tori, how many of your 12 points would you like to gamble? I'm going to play it a little safer, and I'm going to stick with, uh, I think I'm going to go five points. Okay. Wow, playing it real safe. All right. How many questions do you think you're going to get right? three okay all right all right perfect Jared my man you're in the lead now how many of your 15 points would you like to gamble all or nothing that's what I like to hear (laughs) it's the first fucking game it's the first one baby let's do it Jared is betting 15 whole ass points how many do you think you're gonna get right none (laughs) through chaos through chaos jared at least give me a number higher than one okay because then you could just get them all wrong on purpose it's almost harder to get them all wrong than it is to even try and get them all right if they're 50 50 questions he might have a he might have a strategy here uh let's let's just say i'm gonna get 15 right then all 15. You're going to get what? 15. All or nothing. <laughs> Jesus. Wait, so how many right? I didn't even hear you. Oh. I oh, you're going five for five. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. That's, you know what? That's the type of spirit I like in this game. All right, guys. <laughs> let's fucking do this thing. <laughs> the first one I got for you is two women try to disguise themselves as older women and lied about their age in a failed attempt to get a second dose of the COVID vaccine. Did this happen in Florida? Ryan, you're a medical professional. I'll start with you. Yes. Okay, easy. I didn't know if you were agreeing to my saying you're a medical professional answer, but both. <laughs> Tori. I, I'm agreeing to both, yes. <laughs> Tori, did this happen in Florida? I just feel like, isn't Florida where people don't want to get vaccinated? You tell me, cuz. I'm going to say no. I don't think that happened in Florida. All right. 
Jared, you just came from there. Did that ha- could that have happened there? So the thing about Florida to me is Florida is just a wild card. Like Tori, you were talking about TGI Fridays, but like <laughs> Florida, like has got TGI Fridays ain't got nothing on Florida. Like, <laughs> I was just about to ask: Is Florida the TGI Fridays of states? Like, uh, put it like this: Like, so <laughs> we also went to a strip club, right? And oh God. in the strip club, it as says, you do in Florida, it says, "Oh no, even fuck it, even a hotel." The hotel it says, "Like, uh, in order to enter this establishment, you need to have a mask on." Mm-hmm. Nobody had a mask on. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> nobody, like literally nobody had it on. <laughs> Just the, the blatant disregard. Yeah. So, Fuck safety, am I right? So like, uh, who knows what will happen in Florida or will not? Uh, so I'm just going to say no. Okay. Well, this did actually happen in Florida. Fuck. Mm. I thought that might have been some Michigan shit. Yeah. But. No, no, no. This this really happened. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Due to a school bus shortage, a group of high school students had to use a party bus complete with a stripper pole during a recent field trip. Did this or did this not happen in Florida? Tori, you know kids. Did this happen in Florida? <laughs> It wouldn't shock me that Florida is the state that has more buses with stripper poles on them than public school transportation. So I'm going to say <laughs> yes. Okay. Ryan? Oh, yeah. I definitely think this happened in Florida. Yeah. Jared? Wild card theory? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the arguments uh, for not getting, like, for stopping the pandemic was these kids got to go back to school. <laughs> and if they don't have a school bus, like they got to get transported some way. So I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> wow. So all three of you are in agreement that this did happen in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this happened in Massachusetts. What the fuck? Oh. Who'd have thunk it? Not me. Mm. All right, we're two down here. Three more to go. This one hey, actually... Hey is my favorite. Two Burger King employees were arrested after police were tipped off that customers who asked for nasty boy and then requested extra crispy fries got marijuana with their meal. Did this happen in Florida? Jared, I'm gonna start with you. You know the movie Spring Breakers? It was based- Yeah, I do. I love that movie actually. Uh, I mean, problematic James Frank Franco. Yeah, but yeah. then probably his best work, I would argue. Yeah, I agree with you. James Franco is riffraff. It was a good job. Uh, Nailed but- it. <laughs> it actually, because we know now he's a piece of shit, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not gonna be a Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> he I'm ain't going- gonna be in Rush Hour too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Tori, did this happen in Florida? So my instinct initially was to say no, only because Mm -hmm. I know that weed is not legal in Florida. But I I guess there's a lot of other shit in Florida that's not legal that they do anyway. So I don't think legality is really um, setting a a huge boundary in that state. So I'm Mm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Okay. So far, we got two votes that this did happen in Florida. Ryan, what say you? How exactly did they order their food again? What was the terminology? They would go to the order window, ask for nasty boy, and then request extra crispy fries. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, that's a pretty good system. You know, if it- it, it solid. It clearly had to have been working for some amount of time before they- At some point. So, I mean- yeah, yeah, this happened in Florida, sure. All right, so all three of you are in agreement. This happened in Florida. Sadly, it happened in New Hampshire. What is up with the Northeast? Jesus Christ. Uh, Get it together. 
They wilding. Not even <laughs> they out here wilding. Right. That's what happened. <laughs> they out here wilding. That's what's going on. Just clean. Uh, just now get that on I look boats back and clean crap. I feel like I feel like in Florida, you could probably just go up there and be like, "Hi, can you give me some weed?" and at the at the window, and it would be much more kosher than trying to do the terminology. So that's know, true. Hindsight. They do have medical uh, in Florida. Oh, okay. All right. While while I change my name to Crispy Boy on Instagram, I'll give you guys the fourth headline: A man was arrested for trying to trade in a vehicle from the same dealership he stole it from. Did this happen in Florida? Brian, I'm gonna start with you. Yeah, I mean, it sounds way too Florida to not be Florida. So <laughs> like, I, 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 gotta, I gotta say yeah on that one. Okay, okay. I wanna say, Jared, you printed a car down there. You think you could have got away with trying to sell it back to him? Did this happen in Florida? Yes. Okay, two votes for Florida. Tori, what you thinking? It's just like so fucking on the nose. It should be their state motto. Like I, yeah, it ha of course it happened in Florida. All right. So three votes for Florida and it happened in Florida. Of course it, it did. <laughs> of course it fucking did. Come on. That's too easy. All right. We've got the last one here. And, you know, just looking at my math here and looking at how things are going, um, Ryan, you have a chance to win this game, but you need to get this last one correct. All right. All right. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure at all. You got it. Yeah. So a woman was arrested for calling in a bomb threat to her boyfriend's workplace in an attempt to get him to spend more time with her. Was this an event that occurred in Florida? Brian, I'm going to you first because you got the most to lose. What time was the bomb threat called in? <laughs> During the day. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. Just, just, just making sure. Nice uh, try. You know. <laughs> I'm going to say, yes, this happened in Florida. Yeah. Sorry. No. Here we go. Did this happen in Florida? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it did. Okay. Jerry, yes. you got, Jerry, we got two votes for Florida here, man. Um, did this happen there? I feel like this can happen anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the problems with like relationships is communication. Hmm. And talk to him. And that could happen anywhere. Not wrong. And you're, trying, and you're trying to have a problem and you call the police. That's a hell of a miscommunication. <laughs> you could have just said, hey, I wanted to hang out with you. But then a lot of stuff is amplified in Florida. So I want to say yes. <laughs> a lot say, of yes, stuff is amplified. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff is amplified I mean, in is. Florida. That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's sensational. All right, so we got three votes for Florida. Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. The East Coast has been wild, especially up north, because this happened in Maine. Get out. I'm done. Get on a boat and clean a crab <laughs> and behave damn yourself. right you are. <laughs> I mean, they're not eating the clam chowder still. They're right. All right. So, That's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So none of you got the exact right amount. Oddly enough, Jared legitimately called he'd get zero right, and he was correct about that. So I feel real bad now about pressuring him to not do that number. I feel real shitty now about this. Nah, it's all or nothing, and I did what I said I was going to do. I was like, just trying to throw the game. Very clever. Very put that clever. Zero up, pal, please. <laughs> Oh, my God. But with the math being the way it is, <laughs> man, man, oh, man, Ryan, you lose nine points. Tori loses five. Jared loses all 15. And would you know, Tori, you are the first winner in Stupid Game, Stupid Prize history. Congratulations. It's very funny that you brought up um, socks earlier as your favorite prize because, man, man, oh, man, look what I got here for you, yes! homie. Yeah! Oh, I got hell some yeah. goddamn rugged They're outdoor good socks. socks. They're good socks. Oh, they it's will going be going down, baby. Hell yeah. Hell uh, yeah. So, just for the sake of anybody in the chat trying to do the math, 
the prizes you will now win from Dollar Value Tory is this mug, <gasps> this book, ooh, those socks, ah, wow, and of course, as always, a pack of condoms. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, congratulations. Everybody- Thank you to both Jared and Ryan for playing. Tori, you have won. And with that being said, the floor is yours. You get to talk your shit for just a little bit. Anything you want to say, anything you want to plug, anybody you want to drag through the mud, the time is now yours. Um, you know, I, I know that one of the gifts I'm receiving, the prizes I'm receiving is condoms. And as we learned tonight, the largest house in Miami is owned by the man who invented condoms. Um, so Viagra, Oh, I'm sorry. never mind Viagra, but in the same vein, um, um, (laughs) Hey, let's, uh, my PSA to all of that is let's not put all of, uh, birth control on women. Thank you so much. That's my time. Thanks. Mm, Short, sweet, smart. You know what? Just because I had a lot of fun and we're already four minutes over. Jared, you got anything you want to say before we get out of here? Yeah. Viagra was a pill that was initially invented to lower the heart rate, but inadvertently caused erections. And you know what? I hope we all invent things. And I do think that uh, birth control shouldn't also be on a woman. We can go get vasectomy, guys. Uh, You know, just take a little time out of your day and then your dick still work. Uh. <laughs> wow. I noticed a the theme. Ryan, you are a healthcare professional. Um, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, you know, I agree with uh, both of my fellow contestants on here. Um, you know, I'm not going to go too in depth on a whole lot of stuff, but uh, hey, you know, just <laughs> ever, ever be safe out there, you know? <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, Jeez, we did it, Joe. Oh, man, that is the first episode of Stupid Games, Stupid Prizes. If you enjoyed what you saw, which I hope you did, please come back, watch the Trident Network. There is so much content to be had, not only here on Twitch, we also have web series on YouTube. There are podcasts wherever you listen to your podcast. Subscribe if you haven't done it already. Once again, it's just five bucks if you don't have an Amazon subscription, but if you've got that subscription, it's free as fuck so just do it i mean you're already gonna you lose nothing you've lost nothing you've built up this whole time watching the whole show you've built up channel points that you can use for other shows like this one here you might as well do it we've got do it well media on mondays we've got best random ever as and elevator showcase on wednesdays you've got forgot to mute and i love improv on thursdays all that twitch content you've got jesus you got the podcast good game Oh, yeah, that's, oh, it's the voice of God telling me that next week there's trivia here on the show. That is next Monday at the same exact time, correct, God? Yes, at eight. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to get out of here because I'm sweaty as hell under this jacket and I'm very hungry. I may go to TGI Fridays. Oh, my God. On behalf of the contestants and Val up there, have a good night, Internet. We will see you soon. Thanks for watching.